Hello, and welcome to this short practice, uh, Prop Your Pincha. So for today, I'm gonna go over a few ways that you can use common yoga props to help support your forearm balance or your Pincha Mayarasana practice. Um, my cat is not one of the props that we will be discussing today. She'll probably be more in the way. Um, all right, so the first prop that I wanna go over is probably the most common one that you will see in regards to inversions, and that's the wall. Really, really useful tool if you are working up towards poses like handstand, headstand, forearm balance, etc. So a couple tips that I want to give you for the wall. First tip, it's very tempting to do this, but try to actually set yourself up facing the wall with your fingertips at least a couple of inches back from the wall. A really common mistake that I see in newer students is they set themselves up right at the wall, and I think it kind of probably feels like it would be a little bit more safe, a little more stable that way. But what happens when you set up with your hands that close to the wall is that you actually um, remove all the wiggle room that you have for figuring out just how hard to kick. Because if you're right at the wall, if you overkick, you're just gonna boop, bounce off the wall and rebound to the floor. Whereas if you have that little bit of a gap, it gives you the room to kind of find what is exactly the right amount of kick that I need through trial and error. Now, the other thing to keep in mind when you're at the wall and the other reason to keep that bit of a gap is that you wanna look forwards when you're kicking up into forearm balance. You can absolutely do the variation eventually where your head drops, but it's a lot more challenging than the traditional variation trying to move your gaze forwards. Now, the, other, the next prop I wanna go over is using a block. And so when you're using a block, there are two ways that I like to do it and teach it that I wanna offer you. So the first way is to put the block right at the wall on the lowest setting, and then you frame the bottom corners of the block with your thumb and your index knuckles. And you just wanna make sure you always wanna grab your biceps before coming in, make sure your elbows are shoulders width. Now, this is a great way to move from maybe this variation, right? This is a little bit less work for the shoulders to the more classic form with the forearms parallel and the palms facing down. This is a really good way to kind of move towards that. Um, another good step in between is to take the block and move it a couple of inches off the wall, and then you press your palms into the sides of the block with your elbows shoulders width apart, right? So both of these variations are just nice ways to not only help to stabilize the shoulder blades, but it's also a good visual cue, right? Are your elbows drifting apart as you hold this pose? Now, the next variation is using a blanket. And this is especially helpful if you find that this movement right here is really challenging for you. That's really, really common. One of the things that often limits a lot of people in this pose is that you have to have your arms all the way up in the overhead plane, and then you also have to bend your elbows. And keeping this shape with all of your body weight on it is just a lot for a lot of people, and especially when it comes to lat flexibility. So what this blanket does is it takes it from here, right, if you think of this upside down, to here, because what you're doing is you're gonna take your elbows onto the blanket and it's kind of just tipping your chest forwards and it just requires less mobility in your shoulders. And again, this makes it much more accessible for a lot of people. The more folded up the blanket is, the more it's gonna help. But you just wanna make sure if it's very folded up, try to move slowly, because you're gonna have a lot more assistance than you might be used to. And it might actually feel a lot easier than you were expecting coming into the pose. Now the last variation I wanna go over here is using a strap. Now you wanna make sure that when you use your strap, it's shoulders width apart, right? And that might take a little bit of trial and error to find exactly the right width. Now the way that I was first taught how to use this was to put it above the elbows. And I always wondered, am I the only person who doesn't like getting strangled in this pose by the strap upside down? The good news is you don't have to endure that. A really awesome way to position the strap is to put it just below your elbows, and it will achieve just about the same purpose, but without constricting your airways, potentially. So this is, again, these are all really great variations, especially this one and the ones with the blocks, to check, especially if you find that your elbows tend to do this when you hold the pose. Keeping the strap around your forearms will help you to really lock in the alignment that you want to memorize in your body, which is keeping the forearms parallel. Right, so this is a great variation if you find that your elbows tend to drift apart when you try kicking up into this pose. So I hope that you find these tips helpful. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. Um, if you liked what you saw here, please subscribe to my channel um, or follow me on Instagram at yoga with Ashlyn. Um, I post a new video here at least every week. Thank you so much, enjoy your day, namaste.